Hello friends, Rachel Frankie from The Law Talk. Just doing a really quick video today about some of the top things that I've been seeing happening with contracts recently. I understand right now it's during COVID, but some of these things are really important even when we get outside of COVID. So I'm gonna just jump right into it. One of the top issues that I'm seeing when people DIY contracts or get a contract from someone else or simply don't use a contract and or don't go to an attorney that understands business contracts, they end up not having a contract that includes an attorney's fees provision. There's this idea in the United States that if you go to court and you have to pursue a client or a client pursues you, whoever wins gets their attorney's fees paid. It doesn't work that way, especially in the context of normal breach of contract type of situations. There's only two main ways that you can end up getting attorney's fees. Either one, by contract, which is why we include it in all the law talk contracts, which is why I make sure that we have that in there. Also, when I'm reviewing people's contracts, that's number one thing. I'll scroll to the legal miscellany section of the contract, which is typically at the bottom, and I can tell it's either been poorly drafted by that, or the person didn't know what they were doing, or maybe they just made a mistake. But here's the deal. It's either by contract, you can attempt to get attorney's fees if you prevail, or if there is some violation of statute and the statute allows for you to. Simple breach of contract cases typically do not have attorney's fees to the person that prevails. So please, 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 number one, make sure that you put attorney's fees provisions into your contract or clause, whatever you want to call it. We have them a la carte on the Law Talk. We noticed this was a huge thing that many people are going and buying contracts elsewhere. That's okay. You can be a part of our community, be on our email uh, threads, and be getting education from us. We don't mind, but I do mind when you guys are not protected. So obviously, side note, don't buy a contract from someone who's not a lawyer, but also make sure that you have an attorney's fees provision or clause in there so that whoever wins, you're able to get your attorney's fees back. And uh, we just saw a major issue of this in the Law Talk group. And since it was semi-public, I'm not going to use names. You guys can join in the community, take a look and see what that was about. But it was a groom that wanted to, um, that was canceling the the wedding, it was all of this due into COVID, but one of the non-refundable retainer back, well, the client was threatening to pursue the photographer, well, the photographer was having to make a choice. Can I financially afford to be in a lawsuit? And since there was not an attorney's fees provision, probably not. And that is also, as a side note, one of the main things I see with copyright. And many times y'all are having to do this cost benefit analysis of whether or not to enforce your copyrights because you haven't taken the steps to register it. Not going to go too much of that in this video. You can go to the logtog.com forward slash copyright guide. I have an entire 45 minute video about that. So number one is having an attorney's fees clause or provision in your contract. Number two is something that I love to call waivers. You know, remember when I'm using these overarching heading terms, it, that's not as important as what is in the actual document and into the provision or clause itself, okay? So when I say waivers, the reason I love to have it in our contract is because it allows for you to waive off minor breaches, maybe major, but typically minor breaches of contract or moderate breaches without you waiving the entire thing. Why do I like having this in there? This allows for you to offer customer service without complicating the contract. Because here's the thing, I feel like there's this idea that if I have a written contract, it doesn't matter what happens or what goes on, the contract's a contract. And that's not always the case, right? We've got these, like we learned with COVID, you can look on the COVID landing page, I talk about this, there's defenses to um, impossibility and practicability and all that for non-performance of contract. So it's not as simple as the four corners of a contract. And that's why I like to have waivers because if you have a situation where a client may come to you and say, hey, I know I need to pay you payment number two on such and such date, but I can't make it, you can go, that's all right, you're waiving it, but it helps to keep everything else intact, especially all other rema remaining payment terms. If you have other payments that need to be made, right? So one was attorney's fees, two was waivers. Three was actually something I don't want you to have in your contract at all. I want it to be separate. We are seeing this huge right now with all the COVID stuff that is going on. I do not want you to have your model release in your contract. I do not want you to have your model release in your contract. I feel like we should do like a whole chant about it. 
multiple reasons, all right? But the biggest one, and this is an issue that we're seeing during COVID, that's why this video is coming about right now, is that y'all are running around, you're amending contracts, you're canceling contracts, and guess what? That's just life right now, that's what's happening. But when you cancel a contract, you go and cancel a contract, you are canceling as long as you've, have, if, if you haven't drafted the cancellation properly, you're canceling everything in that contract. So what does that mean? Well, when you have a contract that has a model release in it, let's say you're a wedding photographer who has already photographed an engagement hasn't done the wedding yet. Or you're a portrait photographer who maybe has done the portrait session, but then later it needs to be canceled for whatever reason. If you cancel the entire contract, that also cancels the model release unless the cancellation provision or con cancellation document specifically outlines otherwise. All right. There's many other reasons that I don't like having the model release in there. Be think about it this way, just from an administrative standpoint. Model releases, like I just mentioned, should always be able to survive if you want to use the photographs in marketing. They also need to have all the adults that are in the photographs signing it. They, you know, all those adults, though, don't have to be signing the contract, especially in the case of like wedding photography. We've seen where the parents can sign for it or someone can gift it to them that each adult for a model release, because remember what a model release is, is giving permission for the use of your publicity, right? Your face in the photographer's marketing, the client's face in marketing, that adult has to sign for themselves and or their children. So if you have a third party that's signing the contract, or if you're in case of like a portrait session and you only have like mom signing the contract and partner is not signing anything at all. Well, if the model release is in there, technically you don't have the partner's permission. You only have the mom's permission to the mom's publicity rights, all right? So attorney's fees provision, we need to have it in there. We have it on the law talk. Waivers, you need to have it in there. We have it on the law talk. And number three, please be breaking out your model releases and don't come at me with this whole, oh, it's just so hard, administrative. If you're using digital contracts, it is no different than having the contract, signature block, model release, signature block, boom right? Then you have two distinct contracts. It's super simple and easy. So there you go for today. Nice three little quick tips for y'all of big issues that I've been seeing happening. So let's make sure that we get it together so that we can move forward with our photography businesses and keep them protected.